Let's jump in and look at the software. The first thing that you will notice is that our sign-on screen has been redone. We work to make the sign-in experience very similar to that of our other Oracle application and middleware products. I'll go ahead and get signed in to begin the demonstration. The first screen that you will see upon login is our default page. This page programmatically displays the Enterprise One application release and what tools release is powering the application. You will also notice that we have gotten rid of the left-hand navigation paradigm and moved to a more web application navigation. Removing the left-hand nav allowed us to free up about 22.5% more real estate for the end user while running applications. With our new drop-down menu navigation, the user clicks on the Navigate option at the top of the window and proceeds to navigate through their menu structure to select the application that they wish to launch. In this case, I will quickly launch the address book application. I will get into more about the application design in just a little bit. Next, I want to discuss a new feature in Tools 9.1 that we call Enterprise One Pages. This new functionality is a portal-like framework similar to what Fusion has created in their release. However, we looked at that concept and extended it. Enterprise One Pages allows the administrator to define HTML pages for business flows, product branding, BI analytics, social message boards, and external URLs. These are all configurable by user, role, environment based on the same security model that you are already familiar with in Enterprise One today. There are a couple of items here that you do not see that I am particularly proud of. First, all of these pages have zero impact on your login time. Second, both the tabs and HTML content are resolution aware, whether you're working on a 30-inch monitor or an iPad. These ta the tabs and content adjust to match the screen resolution to present a well-designed look and feel. The tabs can also be rearranged based on what the user wishes to see and will remain in that position no matter where they sign in the next time. You can also collapse the tabs in order to free up even more of the canvas for the application. Next, I want to show you one of the HTML flows that we built for delivery with Tools 9.1, Order to Cache. This business flow represents what an end user would do during their workday. As you hover over the boxes in the flow, you see a color change to note that you have an active link. When you click on these boxes, you will be taken to the application or report that the business process dictates. At this point, I will click on the Enter Sales Order process. As I noted before, we have redesigned the look and feel of the application as well. Behind the scenes, our applications are built on metadata. This gives Enterprise One a tremendous advantage to leverage changes to the metadata rendering to make global changes. We switch to what we call RCUX, or Rich Client User Experience. This is a phenomenal set of user interaction design created by Oracle over the past four years. Again, very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Next, I want to introduce a new navigation paradigm in Enterprise One that we call the Carousel. For those people who are used to tablet or smartphone navigation, the Carousel will feel more natural. We have four patents on this navigation framework alone. You will see three tabs, Open Applications, Recent Reports, and Favorites. These same three items are also available in the drop-down menu. These work in concert with each other, so when you change something in one place, it is reflected in the other. For example, if I click on the Favorites tab in the Carousel and then open the Favorites menu, you will see the same list of applications in the same order. The Open Applications tab is just what it states, a listing of the currently open applications. If I go up to FastPath and launch a new application, you will see a new icon appear in the Carousel. You can flick these icons around to place them where you want, etc. To change applications, it's as simple as clicking on a tile and your current application switches. If you place your cursor over one of the tiles, you will get additional details of the application like name, description, and system code. The Favorites tab lists out all the favorites that a user has configured. If the user does not like the order of their favorites, they grab onto the tiles and move them to a new location of their choice. Again, you can move these around and you also have the hover ability for additional information. Recent Reports is an enhancement that our customers have been asking about for a long time. With this release, the end user will have access to the reports right away from the carousel and the drop-down menu. I'm going to go in here and launch a UBE. While I'm doing this, note the color on the tiles. We differentiate the status of the report by color so that the user will know at a glance the status of a report. Green means processing, blue means in queue, and red means that it ended in error. So as I submit this report, you will see a new tile appear in the carousel with the blue color in the corner. Just like with applications, 
I can hover on the tile to display additional information. In this case, we note the UBE is in queue. Once the UBE is done, the status will change to done, and the color of the tile will change as well. Now, just clicking on the tile will then take the user to their output. Simple as that. Another feature of the carousel is its position. You can set up the carousel to be on the bottom, like you see here, or you can move it and dock it anywhere. When the carousel is docked to the sides, we put it in list mode, where the icons are much smaller and more text is shown. You have probably seen this type of animation before on desktop OSs, but all of this animation is happening in just a plain browser. Simply amazing. For those who would prefer the actual object name displayed in the carousel instead of the description, the user can just click on the text and change it to their preference. Again, these are all persistent changes. You will see your last state the next time you log on. So let's talk about the bread and butter of the application, the grid. Over the past couple tools releases, we have added more rich functionality to the grid, like the ability to resize grid columns, move grid columns, and copy and paste information in the grid. Now, with this release, we are adding even more. The first thing is the ability to freeze columns. When a user right-clicks on the grid header, they are presented with some new options. Choosing Freeze will paint a blue line on the edge of the column they selected. They can then scroll through the grid, and the data to the left of the blue line remains frozen. If the user wishes to unfreeze, it is simple as right-clicking again and selecting Unfreeze. Then the user is able to select another column in the grid and do a freeze again on that column. Next, let's talk about the other options that you saw when I showed Freeze. The user is now able to hide and show grid columns in the grid on the fly without having to go into the custom grid format process. The user can simply right-click on the column that they want to hide, and it will disappear from the grid. They can do this with multiple columns. Also, if they want one of those hidden columns back, they can right-click anywhere in the grid header and select one or more columns to unhide. Simple as that. I must mention this again. Everything that you are seeing here is done on a simple browser, not Excel. We have brought all the richness of the desktop client to your browser while still maintaining the incredible power of the Enterprise One grid. Another usability item that we added in this release is the modal search and select. In previous releases, when you clicked on a visual assist, the entire search form was rendered in your browser, making it impossible to see the previous form. With modal search and select, you can now see the application while your visual assist is on the screen. You also have the capability to move the window so that you can look at the data in the application. Pretty nice, huh? The ability to set up queries of the data within your application and save them is also something that we added in this release. Once your application is open, you will see a new icon in the top right of the screen. This opens the query management window. Once open, you will notice that there are blue plus symbols in the form header and grid. This allows you to flexibly select items to build your query. In this case, I will pick sold to from the grid. After items have been added to the query management window, you can select your search criteria, etc. In this example, I will check the set as default option so that once you enter the application, the query is run automatically. Now, I will save the query and give it a name. I can then, after saving the query, exit the application. I can then rerun the application and you will see that the query is automatically run without any additional user interaction. Once back in the application, you can go back into the query management window and add additional criteria to, to your query and save. Remember, this is real time. The end user has the ability to set these up without needing any access to the design tools whatsoever. I think that all of these new UI features at runtime will make a huge difference to the end user experience of Enterprise One.